let me check for my LBS. Everything's in order. Everything is in order. Let's begin because everything's in order. Welcome to my class, everybody. Coming to you live from Sussex. I don't even I don't even know if that's really <laughs> where that accent's from. If you guys can enlighten me. Um my British followers. My British follower I'm just doing that on purpose. I know it irritates you guys when anyone does an accent. Um, so let's get started on today's class. Uh, I am sorry for my absence last week. I have had a weird turn in my health, a bad turn. Um, uh, just a lot of uh, just sickly shit. And I hope that this year is a. <coughs> I was hoping. <laughs> I can't even know what I'm saying. I was hoping that I would feel better and that this was a year, a uh, turn in my health. But it seems this virus has stunted a lot of people's goals. Um, so I'm not taking it personally, though I deserve to. Um, but I had, I could not do classes as well as I was just hustling to finish my office because once my office was done, I knew there were going to be no more hiccups in any process anywhere. Um, my office is like the backbone of my, of my whole entire business, entire, entire life. So I didn't have a comfortable office. I didn't have a permanent office setting. I have gone through like four different versions or five different versions of my office setting already. And this is the last one. Thank God almighty. Um, and I, uh, have a bit of a thing I wanted to ask any of you who have, who are familiar with construction. Um, I wanted to, there's one more thing left in my room to do, which is the trim, the baseboards and the crown molding. And I was wondering if I could, if you guys might give me some input for those of you who are exposed to that kind of work. Do I paint the trim after cutting it to size outside or do I paint it when it's on the walls? Because it seems like if I have to paint another goddamn thing in my room, my office is going to go and turn into a tornado of dust again. And then I would have to, you know, I go through another phase of not having a solid, stable office situation. So it seems like it's a big new decision to paint my crown molding and baseboards outside. But I also do not, I never want to disrupt my office again and I want to keep things consistent I, I just I hate it with all my heart when I skip critique hour. I, it's I love critique hour, um, and I just don't like skipping it. So if you guys have any input on how to paint crown molding and baseboards without a mess, <laughs> and yes, taking it outside is the most logical thing to do. Oh man, I hate this shit. But it's all stuff that's new to me, and for the most part, <clears throat> let's get started on today's class. Um, a couple of announcements. Um, because everything is so crazy and hectic in my life, I, I am not able to run any community challenges at the moment, but keep keep drawing, keep on um, with your current curriculum self-diagnosed or uh, with uh, the help of your peers on the community. If you want to join the community, go to istabrak.com and click on the uh, Reddit icon right here. It'll, it'll take you straight to our Reddit and uh, join it submit your work, almost everyone gets a comment uh, or two. Um, and those who are doing a 14-day challenge who are getting no comments, you most likely are not commenting on anyone else. Uh, so the more you are active, the more people will be active on your posts. Make yourself familiar. You don't have to make friends with everybody on the community. It's 2,500 people. But all you need is a good five friends. And one of the biggest suggestions in that, excuse me, how you're drawing suck is, or why you're drawing suck is that you guys don't have an art community. It's a big, big thing to have a competitive art community that is uh, competitive in a healthy way, constructive criticism, con criticism that uh, outlines weaknesses in your foundation knowledge and helps you, helps fortify it. So it's very, very important to be part of a community. I'm not, um, this is all just for you. This is, a, this is a suggestion for you guys to join. I'm not saying join it and then my page will be full of ads. I have one ad that's been on <laughs> for four months and it's just that Porsche studio is on sale and I invite some of you to come on Patreon as dollars, uh, dollar patrons, but that's as much ads as happen on my community. There's no merchandise, there's no t-shirts, there's no anything like that. Um, so this is just the two things that I put up there. This community is about you guys. I do plug in my, my personal stuff and it's all related to critique, critique hour anyway. So when I say get a community, st get into dialogue, join a discourse community when it comes to art, join that um, discussion, stay active, a daily act, you're gonna, 
freaking improve like crazy a year from now your art will be unrecognizable and you will laugh at the art you made today so um, make sure you guys are active and you are you're commenting on each other I get a lot of things where people are not they're saying I don't get any comments or I don't get any get any uh, uh, recognition and um, even if it grows into a hundred K uh, people, uh, members, you still want to stay active so that people recognize you and find your art and give you a, a comment or two because that's what you did for them. That's how pro bono communi communities work. <clears throat> Another announcement is the Patreon. If everybody joins as a dollar patron, this community will stay self-sufficient. It won't be a difficult balance between, uh, you know, what I have, what other responsibilities I have and my responsibilities to the community. A lot of you are wondering how to support back. You don't have to join for a large uh, uh, subscription. It can be just a dollar, uh, and that's just $12 a year for the lessons that I provide. And, um, uh, and I, I don't want to play the game, play YouTube's advertisement monetization game. I don't want to shrink my videos. I am doing preview videos, but the original videos are still one hour long. And that will never change. Hopefully it's an hour long. Um, you know, sometimes it's 50 minutes, sometimes it's 45, but uh, it depends on my health, but I will I do my absolute best to attend every single critique hour. Today I am very, very short of breath. It's just part of recovering from this horrible virus. Um, I think we're at the near, nearing the end of this monstrosity of, of a time in our lives, but I hope you guys have been taking your time to this time at home to work on your on your skills and, and boost your mileage up. And, um, and that's really it for updates and explanations for why I was absent last week. Um, let's talk about this art. If any, guys, if any of you guys have a question, make sure to at Istabrak in order for me to see it. I think you don't have to do that anymore. I think you just have to write Istabrak and I'll see it. Um, uh, but make sure you write my name, Istabrak, and then your question, or else it won't highlight it in the chat. I'm going to take a quick coughing break. Be right back. Okay, and I changed the stream latency to be super low, so I'll be able to get your questions right away. Um, Alright, so let's get started. Today is another one of those <coughs> dark environment glowy object, uh, uh, perspective anatomy, um, deep forest classes. Um, so there was a class that I did previously uh, where we were talking about this, and I um, it was the girl with the lotus flower that was glowing in the forest. Uh, it's a cool, it's a cool concept, and I just love how you guys take your different takes on it. It's like the same scene, but you have different cameramen choosing how you want to frame it. But it's all the same corrections, it's all the same mistakes, it's all the same issues. Um, the environment is not dark enough to support the focal importance of the secondary light source. That's the official diagnosis line. So write that back to me. The light environment is not dark enough to support the focal importance of the secondary light source. Which means this lotus, which you have chosen to be such a, an important part of the storytelling, is clashing with the primary light source in the scene. This, this is a hardly lit forest. It's not that important a forest at all at the moment. Um, before I do these corrections, though, I did want to open up Portrait Studio because you have some real anatomy issues, and I feel like we're in this in this kind of field of depth of field perspective. Do you guys see it? How she's too big for the canvas, but that it looks nice. Do you guys notice that? And I like that very, very much. Um, but let's just take a look at this quick correction, and then I'll get into the anatomy because I don't feel like I focus enough on anatomy in general in my classes. Just this one little suggest suggestion here of the background being darker than. It's still generally bright out, but it's not that dark anymore. Just this alone has pushed the focal importance of this lotus way to the front of the stage. You can still have your, your forest. You can still have a great deal of it. But now this glowing orb of magic is is important and it's recognizable and it's visible. You don't have to completely drown the forest in shadow. You can leave the base of the forest in a little bit of light. See how we kept some of the light you chose, but you can't have that much brightness at the edge of the canvas. It just does not make any sense to the story. And then the same exact thing with the bottom 
of the environment. So I'm going to choose a green. Sorry, my Photoshop's off screen. I'm going to choose a green. Speaking of Photoshop and off screen, I might get a 4K widescreen monitor. Um, and that, that, you know, ultra wide. And I don't know how that's going to affect Kritika. Or I really don't know if everything is going to be normal. So if you guys have any recommendations for brands, that'd be really cool. If anyone's using those, you guys feel like they're weird if they're not worth it, please tell me. I make I make lots and lots of of product reviews for you guys, warning you about the evils of the industry out there when it comes to our products. So I I really <laughs> I return the favor, please, and tell me which products are, are decent out there for ultra wide monitors. Because my office is a little narrow now, a little office space, my desk space. But yeah, let's let's get back to this. So we're darkening the lower half of the canvas, and I chose a very cool normal neutral dark green for the lower half of the canvas I'm not really using that up there it shows more of a another kind of value here let me just get rid of the corner I already took care of that okay so that alone has done so much we are looking at her from a top-down perspective portrait studio will take care of that I'm gonna draw this make this whole scene in in the studio but I I just want to take care of the lighting first because remember recently the way I think the way I've developed as a teacher because um, I, I feel like I've improved as a teacher over time is I want to now separate the different things that I'm critiquing I want to remind you that lighting is one realm and anatomy is another realm and filming and production and framing and composition is another realm and then you have storytelling and costume and, um, and, and, and characterization and acting in other realm all right, so that's that's many layers of design used to create an illustration. That's why illustrations are hard because there's just too much to manage. Everything has to be considered on every layer of production. So I like to separate the critique hour by each topic. Um, and in this case, right now, I'm separating anatomy and perspective and costume and and and, and texture and all of that stuff and um, framing and composition from lighting. I want to remind you that this individual individual foundation knowledge this individual fundamental can impact a painting alone this this singular fundamental can change the painting entirely all right so that's all I've changed this is the singular fundamental exemplified in front of you so you can see the difference <clears throat> okay then we're gonna continue with lighting we're gonna add a simple soft light layer and I'm just going to take that light from this glowy object and apply it. Okay, and then we have that exact lighting, which is now the primary light source. Primary, secondary, it's argu there's arguments. Um, primary is the environment in that the primary came first. But primary is the secondary in that it is in the storytelling of the canvas it happens secondary in consideration with the focal point and the story and what's what's important what's happening this exact light source color I am not taking there is no step in between eyedropper tool and painting this is I am grabbing this exact color and throwing it on everything please please know that please note that that is all I am doing. Soft brush, and I'm just throwing it on. I'm going to erase away as I go just the edges of that soft brush, just so not everything looks too plush. <clears throat> I'm sorry if you can hear my wheezing. <laughs> also, really, really sound very bad lately. Like, you can almost hear the... Anyway, you know. Um, so I'm just... Uh, stop being weird All right so I'm throwing this in and I'm gonna carry that upward into the forearm but I'm gonna delete it as if it's a cast shadow and I'm identifying the shape of her breasts as they move down and catch that light there is no extra step between catching that value and applying it to everything else all right, and it's going to affect only the immediate area. So some of her chin maybe, but the 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 chin might be affect the whole face. The, the bottom of the chin might be affected. Let me show you by that pink hue. So we're gonna 
place a small little indicator right here, but remember, this is where that argument between what is secondary and what is primary comes in. It's only secondary if the object being illuminated by it is in direct proximity. It's, it's, and then that's only when we have, we're not bringing this light all the way on everything above our head. So now we have different zones. We have different like laws of the land. We have areas nearby. The primary is this. And areas outside of that is where students fall off. So I'm going to use a bluish white hue on areas where we have the universal color come into play. So it'll feel like she's, and I'm going to bring a yellow too. Blue because the way the yellow works with the pink. Yellow because of the, blue because of the way the blue of the light source works with the pink and then yellow because of the skin tone. And I'm not sure why you're lighting things this way with the primary. It seems like a very uh, overcast day in a forest. So you're kind of doing a lot by trying to force that there is a cast shadow. If there was a cast shadow, that means it's enough of a time of day that this primary, this secondary light source would hardly glow. But remember, this secondary light, this primary light source I'm applying to the top of the head, I'm only doing that just so there's the same color on everything on the head. Just so at least in one scenario, the head has the same light source color on it as if to represent a light source that is universal. Get it? I'm just trying to unify the values of the head together. It, you're still dealing with a darker upper canvas. Do you understand? <clears throat> so we have a lot to consider at the moment. So I'm going to get soft brush and just do a little bit more cleanup. But it's never time wasted to like quantify what's happening with the light. It's never wasted time. I'm going to get that pinkish hue and get a new layer because I need to erase and just illuminate the entire palm. As it is being, as the light shines on it. It is the closest thing to this uh, light source and I'm going to put a little bit of a rim light on each finger. <coughs> so any questions so far? Lots of stuff has been changed when it comes to lighting. We're separate. So in your notes, remember those good note takers get brushes. My mods should be on that. My mods should be direct sending me links to all good note takers. But I've been very busy flooring. Man, flooring is hard. But yeah. Good note takers, you need to start categorizing your notes. Which fundamental did I apply where and why? Um, and then you've got this like green 3D effect thing, majig that you did that you learned off some Instagram artist. Don't do that again. That's flattened your image, done nothing for the atmosphere. Represented no great skill. It's literally flattened everything. I just want to blow it up with a, with a incinerator or a flamethrower. But we'll make do with a brush. <clears throat> bad, bad, bad. Get rid of that. I don't know what that is. It seems like you use some kind of 3D movement. If, if she's not moving, if she's not in high movement, don't use that 3D blue, green, blue, red, green, blue, red thing. I don't know where, what it's called. Get rid of it. Maybe this area might get some of that pink hue off the lotus flower. Have some have some order in your canvas. Okay, and then we've got the colors. Um, so the colors here, the colors in this entire scene don't seem to respect a dim environment that works from like this darkly lit with the pink being the dominant color. Oops. It's 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 kind of hard to to dissect exactly what's allowing most of this to happen. But I'm desaturating as a default. So that's that's really desaturated. That's where you were and that's where I'm going to be. All right. 
We'll come back to, to all the stuff that isn't really that visible. We'll come back to it. The way you rendered the breasts, I'm just going to straight up block it. The breast should be higher elevation than the arm. The arms are beside the breast. The breast is ahead of the chest. Okay, so doesn't really explain what you're doing here. Block it if all else fails. Draw those um, Tomb Raider boobs from 1995. If that's even accurate. That means this arm isn't that illuminated in this um, in this setup. That, that arm should be kind of framed with shadow from many different reasons for many different reasons. Alright. And then we've got the eyes and the perspective of the head. I want to tilt her head back, so I'm just going to open up Portrait Studio really quickly. And um, I want to tilt her head in this really uh, present gesture. You're kind of in this really awkward gesture. She seems like she doesn't know how to model. Do you know what I mean? Do you guys get the sense of what I'm saying? Am I not making any sense at all when I say that? It seems like she's not really good at modeling. A, a good model would have utilized every, every uh, part of her body to make the scene active, to, to bring in, high, like that's why models kind of overdo it sometimes, because it's, it's a lot of acting in modeling. If you tilt your, if you keep your head at this neutral, why not just throw it all the way back, as far as you can? If you're going to do this with your arms, add a little bit of a dance to your wrist. If you're going to sit like that with your ass out and do this squat, this, this calendar bikini squat, spread the legs a little bit wider. If you have this, if the cameraman is going to be coming in from a top-down perspective, use some field of view, depth of field, whatever it's called. Um, there's a lot that you could have done uh, with this and a lot that would have, just as acting, remember now we're adding another layer of design. I'm not, I never really talk about costumes or fashion. It's kind of up to you guys. I don't really waste time talking about fashion, um, but... Uh, but yeah, that's all up to you. So I'm just using the joints now to create that same scene. Okay, and I'm just going to tilt that foot back. So we have not even considered this yet as a possible way to design to just kind of overact and try to get that perspective a little bit better. I'll add the field of view later. Okay. You can pose pretty much every joint. And I'm just kind of forcing the foot to just get out of the way just for the perspective. You can break a lot of rules when it comes to framing um, a gesture. Just as, like I'm trying to get the lower half of the legs out of the way. It's okay if I kind of overdid it. It's not really the point. The point was, whatever is visible to the camera is whatever I care about. And then I have the field of view which I've increased and then zoom back in. So do you see what I mean when we have kind of the lower half of the body out of the way so we have a bit more of this kind of perspective. And you want to increase the size of her thighs. You can do that by pressing R. Grab the center and you just kind of chunk them up. If they're too long, use the green to just shorten them, but they stay large in every other axis. Now we go back to that perspective. So what I mean by tilting her head back, she's going to flirtatiously kind of tilt her head back and away from the camera. It's not more of a pride. It's kind of like a flirtatious, girly pose that you'd see in a magazine or seeing some kind of thing. You see what I mean? So we could see a lot more of her lower neck. Just let me just flash back and forth. And we could see a lot more of her torso. And the other arm feels really, really stiff. The other arm could easily just fall beside. 
But if you're doing this really, really crazy um, spell, I would like, oh, what am I doing? I would, um, you know, take advantage of every single, every single feature, every single possible way I could add to her personality through her gesture, so make her more flirtatious. If she tucks her arm in, she's more shy. If she throws her elbow out, she's a little bit less shy. Get it? More extroverted. This is the kind of stuff I want you guys to consider. Or maybe she's um, trying to just keep the other hand at a pretty much neutral. And then I'll just tuck it behind. I like the more shy version, just so it's just out of the way, but still, it acts like the arm that is further off. And then we've got this arm. Let me just recap on what it's doing. So I'm going to lower this arm down. I'm going to move it forward, trying to find where that is. Always reposition your camera when posing, or else you'll move your cam move your camera, and then the arm looks crazy. If it's good for the camera. You don't really have to fix it if it makes sense to the camera. Okay. So I'm just moving that out of the way. So let's recap again. I keep forgetting what she's doing. She's kind of serving it. So what you did actually is kind of really unusual. So she's tilted her her entire elbow this way, and then she did this with her palm, which looks really weird. But because you had no like real exposure to the you know the the reference, you're kind of at a loss now what to do with the hand, and we're stuck with this really stiff hand. Why not have her have her? It, it looks pretty when there's a tilt in the wrist. It always looks pretty. It's a lot of a, it's a big dance thing to tilt your wrist, do something with your wrist so that the arm isn't just one straight line. But it would have been cool if the hands were open and casting the spell because it's really awkward. For instance, if it was doing that. But if the spell is all the way beside and in front of her tor of her lower hips, then a tilt in the wrists might do a little bit more. And then I'm going to really boost this up, and if I can do the zoom, I will. And then tilt the camera. So this is, it's a, it's a bit much, but I like it. A little sensitive to scroll. Okay, I'm gonna. All right, we'll just leave it there. So this is what I think you need in perspective. I would like a larger picture, though. Let me zoom out. All right. And this is what I mean by like that tilted head. We see more of her, of her lower chin. Uh, 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 all right, no, all right, it's okay. So it doesn't make any sense to me that her arm is out like that. Feels like it should be tucked in. And then finally we have the light of the secondary, so be really cool to see what it does. So we have a point light, and that point light is coming from here. It's a bit strong, so the strength should go down. And I'm just here for one thing, this arm. What is it doing? So where is this light exactly? There is a cast shadow if we move it all the way there, and it should be right into 
other hand right on top of. So there would be a cast shadow. Strength is high on purpose just because I'm trying to track down. And yes, the bottom of the breasts do get a light on them. And the bottom of the chin. Let me turn off the indicator. The indicator is off. Alright, so we have some of it on her face. But because this area has a primary on it, so the directional light is on. Right, so the directional light is on. We can decrease its strength. But we still have a pretty high strength for this arm. And then, yeah, there there needs to be... A, I would not have figured that out on my own. I would have forgotten completely about the cast shadow of the hand on the thigh. But then again, this joint isn't exactly as you made it. It's kind of out here a little bit. So, let me click on the indicator move it up. Still the same thing. We still have all of these indicators here for the cast shadow. We still have a cast shadow on the arm. See how the breasts stick out and kind of like create this space. So a lot of stuff is not making any sense. Also, like I don't know if you girls have noticed, but when we try to move our arms, our boobs get in the way, so we need to show how that how that clash happens, especially if she's well endowed. So I would create a little bit of a, a bump in the surface, maybe catching more light so we can pull it off without a shadow but with a light. Sometimes try the light, it, it will do a lot more and blend this side of it. And that way we can show how it's been lifted off. It's not a complete cleavage, it's not like a, a shirt hasn't caved in to the, to the cleavage. It's still beside it. And then we have that, and then finally that cast shadow that made that arm look really funny. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna block it in super rough and check on it. Oh, I like that. That looks great. The light source is actually working like a, a, a light source. I'm just going to use eraser to soften the edge. It doesn't have to be a crazy light. As long as you considered it, you still look like super professional having considered it. No, it needs to be everywhere. And then the perspective on the head is off, obviously, because you're drawing it as if her face is level with the camera, as if it's a basic three-quarter view. Here, we, we see the bottom of her nose. We see a bottom of her eyes. We see her eyebrows all the way up. We see less at the top of her head. You're showing us all the top of her head. And then I'm going to use this value here to cast the shadow there. So it really starting starting to look like this spotlight. Look at that. What do you know? Light's important. <laughs> it just referencing takes you, so it's another one of those rules that I put into that wire drawing stuck video. Um, I may sound like a crazy, I sound like a squirrel when, in that video. I sound like I'm talking so fast. I was younger, I was 26. <laughs> it was 2016 and I, um, I just sound so young. But the facts still apply. The rules still apply. Um, we're working with really, really uh, low reference, kind of high intent, high, high complication light scenario, and you're working without any reference, and that's why your drawings can suck. Because you're not really allowing reference to supplement your lack of knowledge, and then you're trying these super, super complicated clashes between primary and, and, and secondary which don't always clash proportionately because sometimes we have a zone that is primary controlled and a zone that is, that is secondary controlled. So that for instance the secondary light source that you are now seeing is controlled by the primary light source which is the universal. So the reason why I'm using this environment color is because that's the primary responsible for it. But in this side of her body this is the primary which is why I'm using pink. Do you understand? It's situational. 
But I don't like telling students it's situational because then they just use that as an excuse to bypass this um, the order of things. So the back of her of her body looked just a touch too dark for an environment that was open in an open space. Same thing. I'm gonna grab this really really bluish environment color and throw it on the arm. New layer just throw it on the arm because that arm looks way too dark on that far side for an arm that is an open space with clashing light sources. It sounds complicated because I, my, my, my word choice or verbiage is a little bit too convoluted but it's very simple once you start uh, processing this in the orders that they happen in. So each area is localized and it's 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 its own, has its own little leaders and then you uh, work with each setup as long as the very first environment, light environment choice you made was res decided on one thing, just decide on something. But if you are going to have daytime, you have to factor this in, this thing early too. But the beauty of light environment rule is that you just have to ask what time of day is it and that'll help get you started. Get started on all this complicated layering, you just have to ask what time of day is it? Where are we? We're in a closed off forest with the character um, doing a magic spell that is really, really complicated as a light source, but is technically very simple um, in, as long as we darken the background just a little bit more. Let's talk about the face uh, and the perspective. So I don't like her expression. She seems like she's someone who's in a room where two enemies are arguing with each other um, or uh, like having some kind of negotiation. It's not the kind of face I would give a character that is that has flower shoulder pads, you know? Like it seems like she, if it was a story being told, she's not really going to be doing that with her eyebrows. I don't know what she went through in her life that ha makes her have natural bitch face. But you have to go through some shit in your life and by the time you've gone through that shit, you're not wearing flower or anything. So, as, as a, and we hope that our characters are not this complicated, you know, we try to paint stories where characters are a little bit more accessible. We don't want every character to be four-dimensional. Um, that, that's a little bit abstract. Three-dimensional characters are great. Two-dimensional characters are great. Uh, we want sometimes a simple character. We want a simple template that we're working with. So, I know you think it's cool to have a character that has a stern face you gotta earn that stern face as a character, as a, as a person, as a living person. You, you go through some stuff and that stuff is visible on you. It's, it's very easy to read people if you're an artist because you can see how this person has decided to dress themselves. So I'm just throwing that perspective a little bit. A neutral face would have done more than that stern, cool, low eyebrow face that you were doing. You know, a neutral face would have done something. The the sleepy eyes is a good call. I don't know if you intended that. But you see how I'm throwing her hairline into the horizon of her head? That's because her head is tilted back a little. And her, her head is slightly tilted towards the camera as well. Okay, so let's take a look at that before. So before, see that? Her eyebrow, her, he, her forehead looked like it was two inches high if she was in this perspective. Throwing that back does a lot more for the paint. So let's keep going. Um, I like these really full, complete critique hours. They kind of do more um, to, I know I, I like to focus on one particular fundamental, but the befores and afters really impact you guys and that, that helps you remember fundamentals a lot better. So let's talk about light. The light would be able to reach that part of her brow bone. Her cheeks, again with that weird green 3D effect. Don't do that again. Look at how much else you have to worry about. That green 3D effect isn't going to save you from all these fundamentals. All right, so just focus on the fundamentals now and you'll find yourself never enticed to use that weird green 3D effect. Unless you're doing a car chase scene or some kind of high velocity subject that needs motion blur. I, 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 don't, I don't know why you would use this silly little thing that you picked up off DeviantArt tutorial or something. <clears throat> All 
try it and I'm just sorry if that was too much too rough. <laughs> you're all you're all masochists. You're all here because I'm rough. <laughs> anyway. Not like you guys don't know. Alright, so I'm just going that there. I'm going to give her a little bit more of a you have so much detailing that you could do right now on the eyes that you're kind of just skipping it all. The perspective was very off. She's a character in a forest wearing lily pads with a glowing um, lily or lotus, not lily, a uh, lotus uh, flower themed costume. I'm going to soften her face up. I'm going to smudge her face a bit more. She's of this of she's of the softer characters. She's not holding a bloodied sword. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna we're gonna soften and we're gonna blend. If you were painting a character who's wielding a bloodied sword, by all means, rough them up. They're not they're not they don't have time for a beautiful skin regimen. They probably had a horrible life and you know, full of fear and, and, and panic, and that does things to your face. And as artists, we decide not to overblend and soften their faces. So, so let's talk about real life, like not real life, but characters in Game of Thrones. If Game of Thrones were ever to be remade, I would love if they chose a more rugged looking Daenerys. Because she's been through hell. She actually wandered through a, a desert for weeks, if not months, and then she, um, and she just has this perfect skin. No, no. You do that, you end up with really, really patchy, crazy bad skin. That would have been really cool if by the time she sat down and did that monologue on... I've been raped, I've been this, I've been that. It shows if that's been you don't look like a pretty princess with curly hair. And what was that what was with that hairstyle that she constantly had? Does she have like a con air curling iron? Like what was what was that? What was why was her hair always perfect curls? Why didn't it look like rough middle ages braids? Why didn't it look all crazy? Why did they only finally add character when she did go crazy? That's why I don't talk costume, because I, I just feel like there's just a million ways to make a mistake, and it's hard to talk realism when it comes to what a character would wear or what they would look like if it was in that time. And I digress. So, I'm bringing in that primary mixed with white, that yellow, and I'm just throwing it on the cheeks a little bit, just to remind us that there is a sun shining somewhat on this face and creating the sheen and that's the same shine I put on the hair the top of the forehead to make it look more three-dimensional and then there's the missing dark spot of the mouth which will complete the shape of the mouth And sometimes an under-rendered mouth does a lot more for your painting. So let me just flatten and save before Porsche Studio, I mean, Photoshop crashes. I'm going to bring the saturation tool and just saturate her lips a little bit just to unify those colors, which did not work, so I'm going to use brush and put it on color mode. <laughs> and get the pink of her hair. The secret to having skin tone that matches hair is just make the blush the hair color. Write that back to me. That's it! The blush on her face has to be the hair color. Or else it looks really, really stupid because you're gonna use coral pink on her cheeks but her hair isn't a, like this this really, really um, like a, like a, this, this citrusy, acidic, acidic pink or something like that. No. A little bit on her nose, a little bit on her mouth. I'm going to overblend the mouth deliberately. And then bring in that primary, in this case, primary. And place it on the upper half of the lower lip. And then maybe bring in a white for where those teeth are coming through. Or I don't know, there's different ways. You can choose a white or you can choose a dark to show that the mouth is open. I think a dark looks fine. Alright, 
right? And I want to do a little bit more just to give her some kind of, like, something interesting about her. Um, I don't like a neutral expression, especially on a character that is fully developed in an illustration. We can afford to give her something. Just an innocent, kind of simple smile. <clears throat> a bit more blending. I don't want her to read as old and um, that darken on the far cheek. But if the, if the shadows are moving in one direction, that's fine. We still have a bit more issues here and there. For instance, like the hair could do something like that where we throw a big piece in front just because I think it looks better to have some hair move and then the far shape of her head cuts off too short it's like she's lost all volume in her hair and it's completely stuck on her head kinda adds to the tilt of her head as well and then we have a couple more colors clashing with each other. I mean, there's different things you could do. This is why, um, let's talk about gesture one more time. Feels like an uncomfortable position for her to be in, unless her thigh is just a little bit wider. And longer. Just it feels like it's more of a natural hip shape to collapse like that towards a wider opening in the in the legs than whatever is done here. Same with the next thigh. Okay, and then um, I want to use comb tool, but fuck that. Silly just do it myself. Almost done, I promise. So sorry, I actually didn't take any questions yet. Um, go ahead with your questions. And then the shape of her hips will generate an upward kind of curve in the belt. And And then we have some issues that I wanted to discuss. Um, we have the sheen of her golden, which you probably didn't even notice. The golden little uh, thing on her, in her throat. This golden necklace. So I'm just going to get a new layer, put it on color, go to that orange. And just try to do that. I think that might work, but it's such a new color to the palette. I'm not crazy about it, but if for some reason you have to have it, I mean, go for it. I'm just going to use Dodge Tool to boost that up. No, it's like a it's like a golden thing. I'm gonna get that pink and paint that on top of the gold too because that, those are the rules. Anything metallic will reflect nearby lights. That's how you make it make sense. And I'm gonna get that environment blue in the back and just paint that on the metal as well. That should make the metal speak a little bit more realistically. The secret to painting metallics is just to reflect anything nearby as much as possible. Oops. <clears throat> that's really the secret it doesn't, it's not the super complicated thing and then of course some of the pink of her hair can sit on top of the gold as well some of that green alright um, so some issues what I think is cool, this is my touch, this is what I would do, this is what I think is nice. I would 
darken the upper half of the canvas on purpose. As you know, I like drama. And I would just illuminate some of her face to come through. Ah, okay. So. No, I would, because she's so far up in the canvas, I just don't get why she needs that much light. I feel like this is great. And then I can let some of that secondary come through, and that way we have reinforced that um, lotus glow even further. But we can't do that, because that's her face, and it's not a hidden part of her face, it's an open scene. So the best thing to do in this scenario is just extend the canvas. That's like all you really have right now to save your painting, is to just extend the canvas. Um, you have a crop that makes no sense Oopsie. with the focal point. So I just extended the trees and I'm just going to manually paint in the trees because I don't get no breaks. <clears throat> I'm joking, I love my job. <laughs> um, so. Oof, alright. Stay with me. You see how extending the canvas has made it acceptable that her face is that visible, even though it's on the edge of the canvas, but not anymore as much as before? Yeah? So can anyone recap all the major points that I have covered today? Recap. Recap time. Sorry, I don't know what the hell. <laughs> I'm not trying to offend anybody. <laughs> I'm brown, so, so I can do it. I think I'm just uh, on like the end of the critique, so I'm, like, I'm releasing a lot of it, like an exhaust. Alright, um, so I always have a problem with texture of fabric. I can do a decent looking face, but cloth, cloth looks like melted plastic. Do you have any tips on how to make cloth look right? Use the right brush. Use soft brush if it's kind of a silk. Do fabric studies, because every single fold is a coarse shadow, is a little mini mountain. Um, and, uh, and identify where the light source is. Then, depending on the cloth's reflective uh, uh, texture, the kind of fabric used, you have to uh, spike the contrast a little bit more. So I think what you're doing, the melted plastic thing, is you're not actually reflecting um, light like you would metal. Fabric behaves a lot like metal, because it's, a, it's, a, it's an engineered... Um, uh, highly refined material which sounds a lot like metal in that it's reflective it's clean it's cleaned up you need some variation on some of these trees like the faraway trees need to be a little bit more far away okay and the top of some of these trees need to be darker than anything else and that's me bringing in some semblance of this shadow I wanted to throw at the top. Okay, and then, um, yes, there's more and then. There's much more to do, I think. Depends on how much time we got left. It's 6.01. Eh, that's okay. I got nothing else to do. Um, so, then there's detail. Now that she's been thrown off away from this glow, I would add, like, some kind of detail to her face. Come on. Just something to like boost. Yeah, that was horrible. Whatever. Just a little something. Something. Uh, okay. I'm not going to be too picky. <laughs> All right. Um, I know. I know. <laughs> um, let's see. A glowing secondary light source requires a darker primary. Excellent. 
Uh, finally, Esther has to paint the trees because she can't get a break. <laughs> Oh, and blend cute characters, you have to earn a stern expression, and nobody who has been through shit wears flowery shoulder pads. <laughs> Unless you're mixing some kind of grunge with flower, which is cool, I've never seen a lot of people do that. Um, light environments must be dark enough to support the secondary light source that is acting as a focal point. Beautiful, quote Lulu, and expression must convey character. I discovered your channel recently, I'm watching your video in order to get all this newest. Do you think it's a good idea, or should I only see the recent ones? You can start with recent. Recent to oldest, I don't think you're ever going to catch up, Kra, and you're going to like lose, miss out on the recent stuff, so just do recent videos. Do like the last 10 recent videos and take some heavy notes, you'll be set. Uh, blush should be hair color. Good job, Ben. Um, so something that I wanted to do with the flower is I wanted to like cast a shadow off the shoulder pads on the flowers, just because it's making no sense that they have neither the primary nor the secondary govern them. They're just outlined flowers. Don't put big ass flowers on her shoulder pads unless you're going to look into how the heck you're going to make them work. Don't, don't do that unless you're going to own it. Alright, so there's the very, very first cast shadow. And then there's every petal and how it catches the light. So this one casts a shadow on this one, and this one gets some of that light because it has a cast shadow on it. This one, barely catching. Do you see what I'm doing? You only really need two values for this lotus flower. Value number one. Uh, you know what? I'm going to write it down. Value number one, and then select inverse value number two. You don't need all these outlines on them just so that they you have two main values you need to think about. And then you need to think about the secondary light source on top. Right? You don't need to start outlining and destroying your painting. And if you don't have a reference, pick one up. Same with this one, though I don't think this one is going to be affected by the primary, the secondary as much. Now it feels like there's like a wind going through the painting, right? Another thing I wanted to take care of, I'm just going to blur my edges over here. Another thing I wanted to do was this really super strong light on the bottom of her chin. That was a big one that we found with the help of Portrait Studio. So you want to know what I do with that stuff? I don't try to paint it in. I don't try to clash with what's already in there. I just get a new layer, smack it on, and erase away what I don't need. Be like me. Be efficient. Okay. So. And then I'm going to get rid of that. And then I'm going to clean up that. And then as a whole, I'm going to lower that. And then finally, I will show a little bit more lower chin because the perspective demands it. Maybe a little bit on her shiny little nose. Alright. And then we have what you're doing on the eyes, which is why. You know, why are the eyes so under-rendered? So I'm just giving them a little bit more white. There's the 3D projection of the lash line, which you do not have. There's the saturation of the eyes, which in this kind of daytime, I would welcome. It's kind of cool but I would like give it like a greenish hue because of the green surrounding. So I would try to make it fit in its environment. So I just do one big green motion. I'll even grab the green on the floor on her dress and just throw it on top. Okay. And then I would go into detail. You can keep it like this. This looks pretty cool. But I'm trying to respect the design of the artist here. So I chose where those 
pupils go and now I'm darkening the upper half and that was it and then I will place in that specular And the water line, as well as the lower lash line, should be all the same kind of pink. I'm grabbing pink from the hair and putting it on the water line. <coughs> okay, and um, we lost a little bit of detail for the corner of the mouth, so I'm going to try to bring that smile back. Anybody else smile while they're painting a smile? I know I do. Okay, and then um, a little bit too much shadow on the sides of the nose. Uh, considering that that's the value you're using for the socket. Kind of force that smile to come through just because of uh, the hair in the way. And then I will just do one big crown of highlight just on top of her head just to make her head more three dimensional, a sphere. And that's going to be that white yellow on top of everything. And then just bring that down to more neutral. Uh, navigator never lies. Listen to it. All right, it ain't no lie. And then just um, all right, just let's merge all this crap down. I'm just gonna feel like I forced that smile. Away. Um, I'm gonna clean up what's happening with the mouth. I feel like all of this is just so forced. No Cupid's bow. And you don't have to have one, but it looks better. Looks like a more believable mouse. Um, now I'm just trying to reinforce the shadow of the lower part of her head just to make her head look three dimensional. So I'm putting sh light on the top of everything facing up and shadows on the bottom. This is the kind of the, 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 the critiques that I give my private students when they are on when they enter when they have to graduate into you know full on illustrations that you, you every single student I've ever been with for an exception of a rare few has go, have gone through a grayscale regimen on purpose. Um, but yeah, this is the this is the kind of stuff. sometimes you have mistakes that you cannot experience unless you did stuff you didn't know you couldn't you didn't know how to do unless you tried it in an illustration. But as soon as you find out what it is and if it's repetitive, we go straight back into grayscale. So right now you've discovered a lot about what you don't know how to do. Gonna get that same yellow white again and throw that over the eyes. We, we're, we're trying to reflect that the light source is the same. Don't want to flatten the arms too much and it feels like the hem is a little bit off of her shirt. So I'm going to get a dark value and just throw that in there. That's going to help us get some sharpness. That's nice. All right. And I'm just going to do a better job at that. So if you want your stuff critiqued, go to istabrak.com to get your stuff submitted. Sometimes I'll spend an entire class on something. Sometimes I won't. Um, sometimes I'll jump through. I haven't done like a big lineup of stuff to critique in a while. But sometimes I will. And then I would like to do something if everyone can pay attention. I want to put a general glow around her and I want that glow to be pink and I think that will really finalize her beauty as this super healer Soraka whatever Glen Soraka Lotus Glen Soraka I don't know what the hell they have planned um, she just needs a little 
bananas coming out of her head. Alright, so I'm gonna put myself in there. And I'm just gonna throw that off the top. And this won't work unless the background is darkened yet again. You see why the flowers are so off? Because they just don't really do much. And then I'm gonna darken the space behind her just a little bit just so that glow comes through but I'm not I'm not trying to completely throw off the light environment either see that mmm that's nice that's nice like rice oh yeah that reminds me of we have to go get some rice <laughs> all right and I will saturate <laughs> I'm doing I'm gums going home with this I will saturate this, and I, I see this weird bluish thing coming out, that's cool, oh, that's where your blue is coming from, ah, that's cool, I like the blue, um, so, you, uh, it looked like it was part of the background, so you can't blame me for not seeing it, <laughs> so I'm just going to throw some of that blue on her chest, and just clean it up kind of put the put the what's it called it's kind of it's kind of messed with the it's not that I love a vignette it's that a vignette is good for framing an illustration and a lot of illustrations have it it's not a it's not so much a vignette um, and then I'm going back to when I started saturating that like crazy do want it to come through but not that much always looking back at what we can do to limit the distractions around these focal points so I will vignette even more the edge of the canvas but I will in turn illuminate the bottom of those trees in the back just to show that this is a, a magical forest, isn't necessarily the most safe forest, but, well, I'm not even doing anything. Isn't the most safe forest to be in, but around her it's safe. Right. And then all of this glow is going to go on the ground around her as well. So this pink is going to go on the dress floor around her and then we have the general cast shadow of her person on the floor here which is I think we've considered it enough and then I'm going to get some brightish greenish pale and put it on the pants ever so slightly to give us that volume back in those dark spots Oof! light is amazing so we touched on some perspective. We touched on a lot of light. Lots of it. Um, and uh, your gesture in the hand could use some work in referencing. So could your flowers. And then this just character just seems to glow now. And I believe we need a little bit more of that primary on the upper part of her shirt. Just wherever it can reach. All right. So, do you have any questions? I'm constantly feeling, looking at myself while drawing and painting. <laughs> yeah, I also do the expressions I'm painting though. Uh, though I was thought I was the only one who did that. No, we definitely. I definitely make the expression if I can feel the muscles move. I know which ones to paint. Nice, nice answer. Exactly. Uh, while my piece is being critiqued, can I see how it is to burnt my piece? <laughs> well, you did ask for a roast. It's been, it's been roasting for an hour. Um, I'm getting Lee's flash vibes. Just imagine this animated. Look, her eyes look dry. Where are the reflections? I thought it was the only one. No. Um, next trend in is to buy Grungy Flower Girl. <laughs> uh... I feel like that's my personal aesthetic. Yeah. Uh, I really want to paint that now. Alright, so I don't see any questions. Just a bunch of discussion. 
I always have problems with fabric. I already answered that. I don't see anything on my face. You're stuck in the limbo. I've been trying to raise you for an invitation. Um, I haven't. I don't send them out till the start of every month, so you're just gonna have to wait till the fifth, um, which is today. <laughs> I'll be sending those out very soon. I've been very busy. Um, you you should be every. It's kind of common knowledge that every Patreon comes in cycles, and invitations are sent um, in cycles. So, should there be more blue on her face now? And maybe. Yeah, yeah, possibly. I don't want to mess around too much with a third light source, but part of the secondary. Let's give it a go. Let's give it a go. Is that a new layer? Yes. Um, I don't know, Lassie. I feel like it's a little too much work. Let me try to at least frame the shape of her face. I'm going to smudge that on purpose. It feels like it's a bit too bright, working a bit too much like an outline. Kind of distracting. But I would need to widen it more. <laughs> Alright. That's as much as I want to do. Okay, any tips on making hands more steady? I feel like I'm bad at uh, strokes and lines. Oh, making your own hands more steady. You should have a really comfortable work setup. Um, there's also uh, jitters, you know, when you're drawing. It comes with your own, like, whatever you're dealing with. Um, does matching blush with hair work even for crazy unnatural hair colors? There's only so many colors, uh, but yes, technically it does. Um, any tips on making my hands more steady? Let me keep answering that. Um, your elbow should have a comfortable space around it. Your your wrists shouldn't be carrying all the weight. So anything that you wouldn't do to prevent carpal tunnel, you would not be doing while drawing. That's what I have to say about that. All right. I don't even know what this is going to look like. Before. <coughs> after. Um, so we have a crop issue here in the before and after. So. so we are doing what? Oh, right. Right, okay. Before, her face was too peachy. I didn't know what was happening with the mouth. Um, you had a good lotus. I didn't even paint over the lotus. It's, it's a great composition. Um, after, she's softer. She looks like she looks the part. She doesn't look like the daughter of a of a, a gun wielding daughter of a wild west out outlaw. You know, like that's what I feel like I'm seeing off of her, with the short hair and all. The soft glow coming out really stands out now. The fact that we unified the skin tone and the hair by using the same pink, pink as well as using the same white and blue over everything on the top of the head so we have these two different light zones the cast shadow of the hand which makes no sense but I don't care because it's going directly across but it's, it's, it serves the purpose actually I do care it turns out so let me fix it it's just that's all I needed to do um, and then we have the lotus flowers which aren't really responding to the light source that blue is a good call, by the way, whoever did that. <clears throat> the, the background, you see how bright it was? You guys see? It was too bright. Too bright. That's what you're taking away from today. It's too bright. And now it looks like a, you know, really lush forest, but and she's like the only thing creating this soft warmth of healing in it. Another thing you can do, oh, I just remembered fog. <laughs> fog is hella cool. It's so League of Legends. You can just put it everywhere. Just get a gray 
I just like down the fog. Ooh, fog. She's just done so much healing and but there's the danger still lurking in the shadow. Still lurks in the shadow. Go back to the shadow. I'm sorry, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> nah, we didn't really notice the fog. Ain't no thing. Whatever. Uh, are you going to be releasing your 2019 Patreon videos? Uh, possibly. Possibly. Uh, so. Before. After. You didn't need to do much to make fabric look like fabric. You know? You didn't really need to do much. Yes, fog is hella cool. It's just that this kind of scene doesn't really allow it, but I'll allow it. <laughs> yeah, morning dew kind of feels cool, foggy morning. Love it. Okay, so thank you everyone for watching. If you enjoyed today's class, please join us on Reddit. Um, to submit your work, go to isarac.com. I just completely like <laughs> lagged for a second <laughs> to join us to join our class go to isarac i'm so tired isarac.com click on the reddit icon to join submit your work i will critique it i will find it and to submit your notes you have to go to the community and join make sure your notes are organized the better the notes the more free stuff you get you get brushes you get all kinds of stuff from my store porch studio that i used today um which made a big impact considering i had no idea what to do with these cast shadows um is available on sale at the moment. Uh, the price will only slightly go back up, uh, but it is currently on sale. Will soon go back up, and it is on sale at the moment, as well as my brushes, if anyone's interested in my smudge brush, which I used a lot today, as well as all my blocking brushes. Everything that I use in class is mine, um, and it's available on my store. To support as a patron, you can just join as a watcher. I really wouldn't have to campaign so much for Patreon, and I wouldn't have to worry about any of that stuff with YouTube. I don't really work with an agency or a presentation or anything like that. I'm not going to play that game. Um, if you want to join and support this community directly, you may do so on the, uh, Patreon as a dollar. You can join as a dollar patron. It's $12 a year, um, but it helps keep this, keep this community alive. We, we are almost 10 years strong, uh, six, seven, eight years strong. I haven't really counted. Um, no, no, it's not six years, 2013. But I've been doing it since 2012. Um, so that's eight years. So we're eight years strong, you guys. And we've only been really crazy the last two or three years. Consistent critique hour and community involvement and and all these big things happening, like Google Plus shutting down. And we've been through a lot together. Um, so, yeah, if you guys want to join, join as a patron if you would like to support the community. Um, and that's it for announcements, I think. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Hopefully, God willing, I will see you on Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern for another day of learning. Thank you all for attending. I'm sorry if I didn't answer any more questions. My throat really hurts, and I'm short of breath. I gotta go rest. Thank you all. I love you guys very much. Bye.